Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is John Ennis, Journeys in Design, and this is our final workshop for this particular little run with Akshata Mokashi. Now, I'm based in Edinburgh, and this is our uh, design online design hub, which has been put to good use, also known as my living room. And it's wonderful to be saying hello to Akshata, who's based in Mumbai. Hello. Hello, Dr. John. Hello, everybody. Good to see you. Listen, thanks so much for the lovely tutorials that you posted. So we've got our set of three wild weaving tutorials. The first was based on a simple square. Then we looked at a circle. And last time we worked at um, the triangle. So I have got a tiny triangle to show you. So basically, oh. uh, this is just, these are just, it's a run of twigs that were quite green when I sort of, when they were put together and then they just wrapped around to the top from one that was sort of circled like that and then you shove a bit of cord in. So I'm really tough with that and thank you very much for your um, lovely guidance and tutorial. It's so, really cute. Uh, so Scotland is in an interesting position at the moment. We're slowly um, emerging from lockdown but I like the Scottish word canny and we're doing it in a canny, slow way, very paced. I also love the kind of collegiate approach of people in Scotland. Everyone looks out from, for each other here. There's a real strong sense of that here. I don't know if you felt it when you were in Scotland, but I certainly do. Yes. Very similar to the feeling that I have at home in Northern Ireland. I shouldn't say home. My, my home is here in Edinburgh, but my mother says I have to say home is Belfast. In any case, um, so it feels... Uh, right that we're taking the approach we do. How are things in India? You're based in, in Mumbai. Yeah, so as you know, the population density is so much here. And uh, like right now, the trains are also going to start soon. So it's a bit of concern that uh, people are starting, resuming their work soon. And, I mean, uh, and so how, um, in terms of I mean, you've hit the nail on the head with that notion of population density. We've talked about it before. I've been on the trains in India. I mean, they're busy. Uh, you know, everyone is crammed on. So yeah. it, I guess the notion of social distancing doesn't really make any sense. No, not really. It depends from person to person, actually. And um, even the hospitals are really struggling to get the equipment, uh, PPE kits and everything. So it's a bit of worry. Sure. Um, I'm sorry to hear that. And I wish you well and your family, of course. And, um, sure. you know, hopefully we'll all be managing to design a way out of this that um, actually does take care of people as much as business. Right, so sure. uh, we've both been super busy with our with our work. Um, I'll chat a little bit about journeys and design in a minute. But you're working hard on a, on a project called Live History India. Yes. Like to tell uh, us a little bit about that. Yes. So in Live History India, we uh, work with artisans across India and even like heritage. So it's particularly about traveling. But since we are not able to travel there and document stories, we are uh, trying to contact artisans through phone calls and just um, get to know about their craft. And then I've been writing stories on them. And uh, also uh, during the lockdown, it's even more difficult for them to earn at this point because of their daily income. We just depend on the product or the craft they make. So we are trying, trying to source products from them and sell it through our website. Well, look, I'm very excited to be um, linking in with you uh, with Journeys in Design, but you're absolutely, you know, a creative industry across the globe is suffering not only a supply chain, yeah. actual materials to use uh, in jeopardy uh, and has stopped for a period of time, but the capacity to sell product onward yes. from your artisanal um, workshops. It's a fascinating project though, Akshada. I love the notion and it's something that we've been looking at in Journeys in Design of craft heritage, contemporary design, and travel find mm -hmm. a tough time to be starting that business in the current <laughs> circumstances. Yes, it's true. 
And you mentioned that you have LinkedIn uh, with uh, artisans and then you're right mm. about their stories. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, look, I'm really looking forward to sharing some of those stories uh, through Journeys in Design as well in the next oh. to come. Uh, back to weaving, uh, you know, neither of us had a, a lot of time, of course. Uh, Journeys in Design, you, you, I presume you've not done a whole lot of weaving either. <laughs> No, I've just been busy with this work, but sure. I really need to do some weaving. <laughs> do you know, when I do it, it's a lovely bit of mental yeah. well-being from it. There's no question of it. So, you know, I'm, I, it's, in my, it's in my toolkit for keeping well. Um, so, Journeys in Design, uh, we're pushing forward some really interesting projects. We've got Salvage Scotland, which starts in July, and that's a journey around the coasts of Scotland looking at sustainable contemporary design in different ports. And we have a notional uh, ship uh, sailing around the coast. Of course, we're still not able to gather in, in venues, mm -hmm. and so we'll be doing that online. And we've had that announced. And then the uh, 2020. 20 iterations of our linen stories will marry Fife and Northern Ireland in matched programs around making Millie. And you remember the, the Millie Doll project. Yes. We're, looking at, we're also looking at growing in, in Scotland, in Fife, and looking at the areas that used to grow flax and seeing where there mm -hmm. are pre design studios nearby. And that's a little bit of a, a, a travel route as well. Uh, so that's exciting. Um, that's exciting. And we're, we're building up again for our launch next year of Concrete Designs to Thrive, Spaces and Places for Living Well. So it's been a bit of a busy program, but wild weaving has not stopped. So we've talked about uh, the Edinburgh uh, wild weaving that we had, and Abid Nazir, who's currently, you know, is one of the core team, is currently away from Edinburgh, based with family in Lahore. He's in contact with all the wild weavers from Edinburgh in our, in our workshops in uh, October November and January and we're having a little retrospective look about how it feels now to have done that whether anyone's done mm -hmm. or weaving or how it felt at the time to, to do it. Mm -hmm. Your wonderful um, guides are on the uh, YouTube channel and going forward we're going to allow the wild weaving to emerge from the next program. So for Salvage Scotland we're doing some wild weaving on the beach in Prune and Orkney and Dunbar. And then through the, the Our Linen Stories 2020 iteration, we're going to marry parklands and do wild weaving in parklands. And we're going to marry a, a park in Scotland and a park in Northern Ireland, one in August, one in September and one October to do some uh, joint wild weaving. And that'll be with local weavers uh, in those areas. So uh, you're, you're mentioning the point of how um, creative practitioners are, are you know, really in uh, in a difficult place so we we're supporting them by offering uh, an opportunity for weavers to to um, produce our wild weaving workshops local to where, where we are good news we're going to meet again we will meet again in november tell us a little bit about the plan for for november sure so in november i think uh, the wild weaving would take a turn into a celebration mode <laughs> And we would be celebrating festivals um, across the world. Um, like, for example, Christmas tree, we could make small bobbins out of weaving uh, material. And uh, other festivals like Diwali in India. So well, it's a lovely program. So we will celebrate from starting in uh, a wild weave in November, December time. Uh, we'll start with the Christian festival of... of, of um, Christmas, but that's essentially got pagan roots. Um, mm -hmm. And then we'll look at the different festivals that happen, the main uh, festivals, religious and pagan and otherwise, um, through the year afterwards. So we've got a nice series of uh, festival related wild weaving coming up. Mm -hmm. You mentioned pagan festivals. I was thinking um, it all comes from nature and it's for nature. So that connects with wild weaving in nature. It's perfect. So I think you're absolutely right. The, the, the great festivals are often based around the calendar and the sun and moon cycles. Yeah. It seems right that wild weaving finds a place in, in some of those mm -hmm. um, activities. So that's going to be very exciting. And that's a new program for, for next year then. So 
the um the ephemeral uh or I should, how should, how could i put it my my weaving my circle weave <laughs> <laughs> remains a work in progress like shada i'll send you pictures <laughs> and actually it <laughs> no i didn't but it's been an interesting uh, experiment. Uh, I'm ambitious for me, but uh, your your guide is there, and it's good to follow. So I'll be doing my um, in the next little while, and we'll post pictures of whatever it is I come up with. But listen, um, Edinburgh, wish you well, and uh, look forward to hearing more about your wonderful work and to weaving again towards the end of the year. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you so much. Wish you well too. All right. Goodbye for now. Thank you. Bye-bye.